Hi, in today's video from Bailey Pottery, we will be demonstrating how to create a bowl form with the Circlomatic Form Finder. The Circlomatic Form Finder template set consists of 24 flexible circular templates. This set was designed by studio potter and teacher Sandy Pierantazzi as a way to explore forms through hand building. Here you can see many of the tools that we will be using in this demonstration. You can find a complete list of tools in our blog post on baileypottery.com. Today we will be creating a simple bowl form using the Circlomatic, and to begin we will roll out a slab of clay using our Bailey Minimite 2 16 inch slab roller. It's important to have slabs that are a consistent thickness when you're stacking multiple forms, and a slab roller will make that possible for you. One large slab using this machine will give us just enough clay to create our bowl today. A little bit of information about the Circlomatic Form Finder templates. They are made of a flexible plastic that can be reused over and over again and wiped clean. And they're helpful for learning about how conical forms are developed from cutting sections out of circles. You can think of the various parts as building blocks for discovering forms. There's no right or wrong way to use this set. It's all about exploring forms with interchangeable parts. With the Circlomatic Form Finder set, you have many options in hand building. Each of the pieces in the set is labeled with a letter so you can keep track of what you make for next time. The piece that we're going to use today is labeled F. And you can add texture to your work before you do any cutting. We've decided to add a little texture to the outside of our bowl by rolling an MKM hand roller with a leaf pattern onto our freshly rolled slab. Cut out your slab around the template using a knife tool. Here we're using our loved DPT 240 Dolan knife tool which features a high carbon steel cutting blade, deeply set and riveted into a hardwood handle. Set the remaining part of the slab aside to create a base for the bowl later. Next, you will want to create beveled edges on the two sides that will be connected. You're cutting and dividing the thickness of the slab at an angle to create a beveled edge. On the other side, you will want to create a beveled edge in the opposite angle. Score both edges with a scoring tool. Here we're going to use a Zim scoring tool. And then we add a thin layer of slip using a brush. If you prefer to work with more firm clay, you can let your clay set up and come back to it. We're working with relatively wet clay for demonstration purposes, which means that the clay adheres to itself quite easily. So you'll want to pick up the piece, curl it around, and overlap the edges. Then you'll want to tack down the seam, pushing from both the inside and the outside. We kept the seam on the outside of the piece as a record of its process, but we used a wooden tool on the inside to smooth the seam. You can use the purple template sets or you can use circle hole cutters to create the bottom piece of the bowl. Our Van Gilder hole cutter sets work perfectly in this case. For the bottom of the bowl, flip the textured circle over so that the texture will be visible on the foot of the piece. Then score the outer ring of the circle. Every time that we connect two pieces of clay together, we want to make sure we're scoring and adding slip in order to create a strong bond between the pieces. A metal scraper rib with a serrated edge 
is also a useful tool for scoring clay. Our slip is simply a watered down version of the clay that we're using, which is CCS speckled clay by Tuckers. We flip the circle onto the cylindrical form. As you can see, we are essentially creating the bowl upside down. We must connect the bottom of the bowl onto the walls. Press the clay down gently using your fingertips to tighten up the connection. Creating this on a banding wheel allows us to turn the piece and access it in the round. Compress and turn, working slowly and carefully. Smooth the seam using your fingertips, then paddle it to tighten the seam. Carefully flip the bowl right side up and put any finishing touches on it. You can compress the connection located in the innermost corner of the bowl with a wooden tool. You can smooth the rim of the bowl with a damp sponge now, or alternatively, you can wait for it to set up to a leather hard state, use a metal rasp to shave the rim down, and then smooth it with a damp sponge. You can keep this bowl straight-sided or you can belly it out. Here, we're gonna show you how to add a little bit of volume. Use your fingertips to apply even pressure vertically along the inside of the bowl as you turn the banding wheel. Support the exterior of the bowl with your other hand. Next, do a pass with a soft rib. Here we are using a rib from Cheryl Mud Tools and it's number one. The yellow color in this Mud Tools line denotes that this is a soft rib. We suggest that you dry hand-built work like this under a sheet of plastic. When your piece is fully dry, bisque fire it. For this clay, we bisque fired to cone 04. We selected a reliable Amico satin matte white glaze to enhance the speckle in the clay body and the textured pattern on the exterior of the bowl. We use the shortcut brush from Zim and paint two coats of glaze on both the inside and outside of the bowl, excluding the foot. We do not glaze any areas that will come in contact with the kiln shelf. Once again, we use our banding wheel to work evenly and in the round. After applying glaze, fire your piece to the appropriate temperature. Here is our simple hand-built bowl created with the help of the Circlomatic Form Finder set. With 24 templates, you can create just about anything. And we're here to help with the tools, supplies, and equipment to keep you creative. Visit us at baileypottery.com. Till next time.